Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. <clears throat> now, that is a song of joy, a triumphant joy. <clears throat> we didn't talk about what we're going to have in terms of music together. So it, it, it's, this is the day that the Lord has made. We need to rejoice and be glad. Now, I'm just giving you a warning that for whatever reason I helped with the Christmas parade, it was like every do, every year. But for some reason this morning when I went to make coffee in my Keurig, um, I forgot to put a cup under it. So if I mess up today, I'm just warning you. But we'll get through this together. So at this time, Patty will lead us forward with any announcements, and then I'll have an announcement myself. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I do have quite a list of announcements, so I'll do those first. There is a council meeting this Tuesday evening at 4.30. Anyone interested can join. There is coffee hour after the service downstairs today. Please enjoy. We're also collecting the mittens, gloves, scarves, hats, and uh, putting them under our tree for uh, the, well, the, the people that need them. And the tree decorating will be next Sunday after the service on Sunday the 24th. There is a sign-up sheet down in the entryway for Advent readers. I believe uh, two, we need two and two are filled. We have a happy birthdays for Michael Arnold and Maya Chiantello. Our Samaritan's Purse is uh, in to help those for the hurricane relief. Um, check in the church notes for that. Our gingerbread house is uh, the list, the wish list is on the bulletin board down in the, in the entryway, so please check that and um, make your selections. Poinsettia's information is coming soon to decorate our Altar. And November, our monthly mission is Friends Incorporated, which are paper and cleaning products for their needs. Are there any announcements for the church today? Yes. I do. Yep. Thank you, Patty. Phyllis, Heather, uh, I think we all know, and we, we certainly deeply miss uh, Dale. Um, but just, just to give you a word, this coming Saturday, the 23rd, we will be having his service out in the cemetery uh, with military honors. And if I presume we are going to, it's okay, is it going to be open to everybody? That's what I thought we last did. So, so anyway, so plan on attending, and, and it's good to see you here. It really is. So we'll, we'll probably overwhelmingly surround you with love today, and, and always. So God be with you. So that's the only announcement I have at this time. And let's stand for our call to worship. God be praised for turning seasons. Blustery winter with its snow face, the fragile wings of spring, and hot, heavy growing grazing summer. Now two faced autumn, autumn begins with burnished burnish days and drizzling, and drizzling days. Autumn September crimson, October orange, and November gray. Autumn, golden, golden leaves, ripe, ripe red, red Cortlands, school, school bells, bells, football, football cheers, cheers, pumpkin, pumpkin pie, pie seed, mints, the, the touch, touch of homecoming. Autumn, when between the boughs of leaf lost trees, squirrels race winter. We gather in the harvest of our lives, the plenty, the good, and rake up the scatterings, dried hopes, and fallen dreams. And we offer all the air and bounty and give thanks to you. Join together in our opening prayer. You created for yourself a world filled with diversity and blessed by a breath of life. Rainbow colors bloom in spring. Summer breezes bring garden delight. And now as autumn comes our way, we see, see the, work the work of your paintbrush upon every face and tree. Amen. Let's join together in our opening hymn, Morning Has Broken. Morning has broken. 
like the first morning, like bird has spoken, like the first bird. Praise for the singing, praise for the morning, praise for them springing, fresh from the world. Sweet the rains do fall, sunlit from heaven, like the first dew fall on the first grass. Praise for the sweetness of the wet garden, sprung in completeness where his feet pass. Mine is the sunlight, mine is the morning, born of the one light, Eden saw play. Praise with elation, praise every morning, God's recreation of a new day. Would you please be seated? We live in a world where we see a lot of brokenness, we see a lot of pain, we see a lot of anger, we see a lot of people who are estranged from each other. But God is a God of love. And we're about to enter a season that is not just happy, but it's about joy. And that joy comes if we realize how much we are loved. Because if we really understand that, that God's not going to abandon us, that that can, in the midst of everything else, we can experience joy. So in the spirit of confession at this time, would you please join together with me in our prayer of confession? Let us pray. Gracious God, we confess that we have not loved you with all our heart, our soul, our strength, our mind. We have not loved our neighbor with a deep and abiding compassion. And we have not loved ourselves and cared for our own truest needs. Transform our shallowness, enliven our deadness, Heal our wounded, broken places, and so fill us with our spirit that we can be forgiven, forgive others and others. For we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who brings us love that has no end. Please hear these words of assurance, these words from Christ. My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So go forth in the power of the Almighty, who forgives you and loves you. Amen. Let's take a few moments and greet each other in Christian love.
Before we uh, sing this song, you might say, why are we singing this song? Because it's usually done at baptisms and, and those kinds of things and graduations. But I want you to look at this song from God's perspective with God's Son. It will be coming to us, you know, Emmanuel during this season. Please be seated. Our Old Testament reading is Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his surpassing greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with clanging cymbals. Praise him with loud clanging cymbals. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our New Testament reading is Romans chapter 15, verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Our gospel lesson for the day is taken from John's gospel, verses 9 through 17, but in my message, I will have some other John texts that Jesus tells. As a father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I've said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends. If you do what I command you, I will not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. 
But I have called you friends because I have made known to you every, everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commandments so that you may love one another. May God's blessing be added to the sharing of this God's word. All right. If you guys want to come up here, I'm going to see if I can get you, make you crack a smile. I wish I had better object lessons for people your age, guys your age. So I'm going to tell you a story. Okay. What makes, okay, I'm going to ask you guys a question. I know the light blinds you, doesn't it? You can sit on this side if you want. Or I can loan you my sunglasses back there. Okay, so guys, I want you to put on your thinking caps. What makes you happy? I know they're thinking so. Not being here, probably. What makes you happy? Think of some things that make you happy. What? What makes you happy? Can't think of anything? You got two things? Mm -hmm. Okay, what are they? The ones um, in football chucking people so they fall down and they're fine. So playing football? Yeah. I played football, yeah. Doing wrestling. Wrestling? Mm -hmm. Okay. And winning, right? Yeah. Or just doing it? Is that kind of fun too? Okay. All right. Now. I'm going to tell you a story. You, you know what hurricanes are, right? We've had some bad ones this year. Way back in 2005, I was called down to Hurricane Katrina early, right after Labor Day. And you could see destruction for miles up and down the coast and people who had lost everything, people who were very sad, and some actually had lost their lives because they could be very, very terrible things. But I was in one spot in Biloxi, Mississippi one day, and it was really hot, you know, and we ended up wearing this, our same clothes for several days in a row because you just don't bring in a lot of stuff. You can't. But I, I was in this one area. It was by a, a high school football stadium, and I heard some screaming from the far end of the parking lot. And I thought, oh, boy, somebody's in distress. And so I raced down there because that's what I do. I, I help deal with those kind of things. And I got down there, and there was this, this, there was this couple from that part of, of the city uh, who were there, and they were talking to a counselor, and they were, they were, they were full of joy. They were screams of joy. Could you imagine a hurricane, all this loss? They lost, they lost their home, but they had joy, more than happiness. And you know why they had it? It's because th their house had been ruined, but the church, the brick church that was in their neighborhood, they had a, a barbecue grill, you know, a charcoal type, that was, that was not swept away. And their pastor and, and the people in the church decided, well, you know, all of this food is going to spoil because there's no electricity, right? So they said, let's hook it up and give it to the first responders and other people who need something to eat. It gave them a purpose. That made them happy. So I want you to think about that. Joy is something a little deeper than saying, I'm happy, oh, I, get, I got this for Christmas or this for my birthday or any of those kinds of things. Happiness is nice, but you know what? It kind of goes away. Toys get old, don't they? Stuff gets old or scratched. We as adults know that too, right? Yeah. So, but joy, that's, that's really what the season we're starting in is all about. Okay, guys? Thank you for listening to this old guy. So let's have a word of prayer. Gracious God. Be with these wonderful guys. Be with them. Help them to find joy, meaning, and purpose. Bless them in all that they do. Help them to study hard. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, thanks, guys. Thanks for coming up. <laughs> so that was the sermon, so... Tim is probably thinking, that's good. All right. Would you join me in a moment of prayer? God, may the words which I am about to utter and the privilege that I now assume be acceptable in your sight. Amen. 
Well, the weather has not been too bad if we really think about it. This last week was kind of dreary, wasn't it? With all, you know, when we were talking about the gray size in our, you know, in one of our early songs here, uh, or in our call to worship. But we have to admit we don't have six feet of snow yet, right? And I haven't tuned up my snow blower, so I can stay that way. But it seems that summer is not a distant memory because I know one of you had said that you had like an Easter lily or something that was blooming. Seasons are a little bit confused right now, although a calendar would tell us otherwise. But I've been thinking back lately to a conversation that I had with my late father-in-law, another dad to me, Grace's dad, Meredith. We were sitting by the fire pit behind the cabin up north on one beautiful night that was magnificently clear. You could see stars like the heavens were opened up. It seemed that I could look very deeply into the depths of the cosmos on that night. And it was one of those kind of nights, it was a night of reflection. My father-in-law being a psychologist and a retired minister, and I were talking about the kinds of things that ministers and theologians and philosophers talk about when we're not talking about sports or what everybody else talks about. But it was one of those kind of nights. And we were talking, you know, we discussed the trials and tribulations of life all of us who try to get together and solve the problems of the world, right? If only we could. But overcoming hardships, that kind of stuff. My, Meredith, my father-in-law, for those of you who never met him, is, was one of those most positive, hopeful, forward-thinking people that I've ever known. My dad was, too, in his own way. He was, even in spite of the fact that both of his parents had died when he was a teenager. And he faced several other difficult challenges throughout his adult life. As we stood there on that beautiful night, Meredith reflected that he had discovered that if, if you do enough deep soul searching, if you dig deep enough within you, that you will find joy underneath all of those scars, underneath all of that, that heartbreak. Joy is there because joy is the essence of love. And to maintain that joyful state of being, he had to learn how to control his negative thoughts. Hard to do, isn't it? He said it took a lot of hard dis um, discipline work, but eventually he was able to maintain that state of being to bear fruit of the spirit. The word for today is joy. I remember, Cindy, when you had the kids up here and we had more kids, you, you, you kind of led us in that song, you know, that joy, 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 joy down on your heart. I haven't forgotten that. We may do that again some point. It's joy. So you might ask, what is joy? Is it unbridled happiness? Unrelenting relenting giddiness? No. Let's make the distinction another way. Happiness is like the glint of sunshine on the surface of a river. Joy is like the living current of that river itself. Much deeper, more profound. And it pours in its deep channel to the sea. Joy is a state of being always there, not altered by life's challenges. Happiness is fickle. It's fleeting. You get a brand new car and you're happy about it, and you get a scratch on it. Well, you know, so that's how it goes. We, we all know that. You know, it's not our first rodeos. Both the Old and New Testament make many references to joy. If you just look it up by a keyword, there's joy in creation itself on the first day of history. As the Bible tells us, the morning stars sang together. The wise men, the magi, when they saw the star over Bethlehem as a sign, were overwhelmed with what? With joy, not happiness. While the shepherds were abiding their, the, the fields, watching their flocks by night, an angel of the Lord appeared and glory shone all around them. And the angel said, do not be afraid. I bring you good noise, uh, good news of great joy for all people. Jesus in the gospel tells us that he brings joy, that we might be complete in joy. And John, in our text for this morning, and another, uh, another section from John, we are told essentially the same thing. Do you recall the last night before his crucifixion? Jesus gathered his disciples in that prearranged upper room and spoke to them on the things that were about to happen. Their hearts were heavy, very heavy, with foreboding. 
The atmosphere was heavy with the thickness of gloom of an impending tragedy. It was then that Jesus spoke those immortal words. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. A little while later, he told them, in this world, you will have difficulty. You will have hardship, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Jesus said these things already knowing what awful things were going to happen to him. He was triumphant in spirit, even though the dark, despairing darkness of the cross was casting its long shadow before him. We should not portray our Lord as a man of sorrows. He was and is a messenger of joy. Theologian John Buttrick, writing during the Second World War, stated, in a world dark with griefs and hollow with graves, we laugh. Why? What's there to laugh about? What's there to be joyful about? We lament. But look around you. Look and see there are those who stand tall in our midst, who know all too well a world dark with grief and hollow with graves. And they too are filled with joy. And we sometimes wonder and scratch our head, what's, what's their secret? Look at the Christopher Reeve. Remember Christopher Reeve? There is a great example. You know, Superman. A handsome hunk, movie star, millionaire. He had the world, didn't he? Until he fell from that horse. One instant feeling on top of the world, the next feeling all of its weight pressing down upon him. He wasn't a man of sorrows, though. He had a deep inner joy. And you could see it radiating from him. Look at C.S. Lewis. Who, who so dearly loved his wife, who died before him. And when he sat down to write his spiritual autobiography, he titled it, Surprised by Joy. Because sometimes it surprises us. And the hymn that we, we sing sometimes, and we'll be singing it again pretty soon, is Beethoven's, Beethoven's Ode to Joy. It's one of my favorites. I'm sure it's a favorite of many of you. Remember the story of Beethoven? I think it, it's worth repeating. He was a young composer when he learned that his gift, is, is, he, that he was going deaf, he was in agony about it. So much potential. And in a letter to his friend, he wrote, what a sorrowful life I must now live. How happy I would be, he said, if my hearing were completely restored. But as it is, I must draw back from everything. And the most beautiful years of my life will take wing without him accomplishing all the promise of his talent. A musician robbed of his wonderful music, but what happened to him? There was a change. He changed. He found that he could adapt and overcome, that life was still worth living, and, and, and behind and woven into that, he could adapt. That life was still worth living. And you might remember, though, the story of Beethoven, his first performance of the fourth movement of his Ninth Symphony. A man whose ears were deaf at this point, who stood there after the performance and couldn't hear the ovation of the crowd. They had to turn him around to see what had happened. How could a man crushed by fate become a man of great music. He wrote it in a letter. He said, I will seize fate by the throat. Most assuredly, it shall not get me down. Oh, he said, it is so beautiful to live life a thousandfold joy. How one faces hardships and be filled with so much joy. I think I know why. Now, let me explain to you in a rather indirect way. When I have done, over the many years I've been a pastor, premarital work with couples wanting to get married, and I got a lot of those stories, by the way, but they're not appropriate, all of them. Work with young couples' preparation for their wedding. I counsel them to let go of all of the things they are inclined to worry about at the time of the wedding and preparing for the wedding. Because if they do that, it's lost. The experience is lost. To go along for the ride, I tell them, trust me, I'll get you through there. 
and trust me that I will lead them through this. I found over and over again that when couples are able to do this, just let go and trust. To have faith on a sacred day when they gaze deeply into each other's eyes, that they are filled with not happiness, but joy. And those of us privileged to be a part of this process experience their joy, their love. And consider this. I don't know how many of you have had the privilege of talking to somebody who's had a near-death experience. I have, many times. I've also read about every book and article of repute in Harvard and places like that that ever, ever has been written about the subject. And what those who have had such experience have tried to describe to me is this. At the end of every tunnel, the near dead seem to go through a brilliant, brilliant, beautiful light, unlike anything they've ever experienced before. Not harsh, but a light, a presence, a joyful love, if you will, a being of pure love, unlike any of them they had ever known before. And they were filled with joy, indescribable joy, and many of them didn't want to be resuscitated. They wanted to stay there in that place. And everyone who had had that experience came back forever altered and transformed. The worry is a thought which races through so many of our minds. The schedules we have to keep rob us of what is there in those moments. As always, it's always been there just beneath the, you know, the, the clattering, clamoring stuff that we have to deal with. Now, even if the Packers beat the Bears today, 100 to nothing, that'll make you happy, but that won't bring us joy. Uh, for it's much more than that. Now remember that child zone I was just talking and alluding to with Cindy. We learn in, in, in Bible or Sunday school. I've got that joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Down in my heart. And so it goes on and on and on. So I say to all of you who've lost your enthusiasm, you have made your Christian walk less of a dance than a burdensome journey. Return to the fountain. Drink from the cup. Spend time in prayer. Take a long walk. Reflect on what God is trying to say to us, whispering into our hearts. Do those things that help to nourish and re-nourish you and uncover this joy, the fruit of the vine. For I know as surely as I move and breathe that joy shall be ours. Be of good cheer. For he abides, he will overcome the world. And I share this message to help prepare the way for us as we enter this season of Advent and Christmas. Would you join me in a moment of prayer? Gracious and loving God, we thank you for joy. Oh, how we wish so many of us we could experience that joy. We have, but sometimes it's just been in fleeting moments, fleeting experiences. In this world of ours, God, we experience our personal losses. Some people have lost hope. Some people are lost. Some people don't think there's anything to live for. Help us, God, in whatever ways we can to be your ambassadors and to bring joy because it must be shared. It must be shared to help light the candles of other people. Help them light the way. We thank you, God, for joy. We thank you for all the stories in Scripture that are about joy. In Jesus' name and for his sake, we pray. This time, I'd like to go around and find out what prayers of joy or concern um, you have. And, of course, Phyllis and Heidi and, and Heather, we, we, all of you, including Heidi you know, and, and everybody else, are certainly in our prayers, as well as the American Legion family. I could tell they were hurting um, when I saw them go by, but we all kind of looked and did that. So, um, other other prayers. And you've got... Thank you. Other prayers this morning. I was waiting for a cue. I have two uh, prayers for Sheila, my neighbor, who's having surgery on her knee tomorrow, 
and prayers for the medical staff that's going to be working mm -hmm. with her. Christ in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And the other one is um, for all of us, prayers for our future leaders coming up to help them keep their promises, to serve our people and not try to control them. Christ in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Thank you, Kay. Other prayers this morning. Don't be shy. Oh, Heather, my dear. I actually just want to say thank you also to the church and everyone who's reached out and sent cards all along. And we send our hearts out to you as well because you're all healing and grieving. My dad as well. We knew he meant a lot to you all. So for you as all as well, Christ in your mercy. Here. You're such a sweetie. And we love the posts that you put on social media. I mean, she's always putting out positive things, it seems like. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes I, I forget not to like them. I, I get too busy, so. But it's, but it's not because I don't like them. Other prayers this morning. That's, that's the way it always happens. So. Um, I just wanted to say a prayer of joy. Um, I was able to spend a lot of the day yesterday with my, some of my nieces and nephew, and I always find joy in that. Christ in your mercy. You're just one of those kids, too. I've seen, I've experienced you now. Would you please pray with me? Gracious God, we say, we need joy. We experience happiness. And we've experienced joy, maybe not recognizing what it is. For those who are hurting, gracious God, who have suffered loss, we pray for them knowing that they are in good keeping. We also pray for those who are left behind, but still connected by love, as you have promised us. Love cannot be broken, not even by death itself. For all those who are suffering, gracious God, we lift them up into the light of your love, even those we don't know. And for the leaders of our country, gracious God, help them to hear and meet the needs of the American people. We thank you, God, that you hear all of our prayers. You're an awesome God. And we thank you for the privilege of gathering together in worship and in the season of Advent and Christmas coming up, peace, hope, love, and joy being the watchwords. We indeed look forward, help to prepare our hearts so that we will be filled with that light of joy. And now, gracious God, we together pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples by praying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Freely and richly has God blessed us, and we are grateful. And one of the ways that we share our gratitude is in our morning offering at this time.
God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Always loving and gracious God, we would ask you accept these gifts as we your people lift them up to you. Grant that the causes to which they are devoted be causes of love given to your glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray, we share, and we live. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.